Elizabeth Jameson sees herself as an art activist, someone who's using visual symbolism to bridge understanding between brain disease patients and the medical professionals who treat them. Elizabeth has lived with her own chronic brain disease, multiple sclerosis, for more than 20 years. In a cooperative artist studio in her San Francisco Bay Area hometown, she creates work inspired by a medical technology bluntly revealing, yet deeply intimate. I had a major MS episode where I stopped being able to talk and I developed a big lesion in the Brokaw's area of the brain. The inflammation of the lesion prevented me from talking as well as walking and a lot of other things. But as a lawyer, because I was a courtroom lawyer, it's very hard to be a lawyer when you can't talk and communicate. One of the main attractions of taking on cases in the area of health law is the potential for bringing about law reform. And I went through a, a real depression of thinking, my God, what am I going to do? And I love being a mother. I love spending the time with the boys. But I love being a, a lawyer. But I really didn't feel I could do that, not being able to speak and communicate. So I signed up for a, a very inexpensive community art class, and I said, what the hell, why not? And I went, and the, during the first class I fell, I absolutely fell in love. It's, I just can't explain the joy I felt having a paintbrush in my hand and opening up the paints and smelling the paints. And uh, I just, it was wonderful. And my life changed. Before I got, um, my MS started really impacting my life in a dramatic way. I was a public interest lawyer, and I always wanted to devote my life to the poor and disenfranchised, because I figured that's what we should do with our life, is to try to make the world better. And as an artist, I felt the same thing. Even though I love, um, painting flowers and painting people and I love painting anything. But I figure I, I want to do something that might, might have meaning to other people and could make some impact. And what me, more meaning could, could be is portray something that I was going through and that is a brain disease and the for me, the symbol of MS are brain scans, because I've spent so many years in an MRI machine having my brain examined. And I thought, gee, maybe I can do something to make the scans interesting to other people and complex and less scary. I guess that's my, my number one desire, is medical students to look at my artwork and to see that the brain is beautiful. Because it is beautiful. And um, I've been teaching at the medical school at UCSF, and I like to think that medical students may be impressionable in terms of having them view the body in different ways than they're used to viewing it. And I would like neurologists and physicians to view my work to see if they can use softer language in talking about diagnoses and how they convey the language they use to their patients in terms of what they find in their brain scans. But I'm running out of brain scans because I have progressive MS. And when you have progressive MS, 
you tend not to have brain scans anymore because your brain, um, because the disease changes of an inflammatory disease when you really want to have lots of brain scans in order to see if you can treat the um, lesions to the advanced disease, which I have, which tends not to be an inflammatory disease anymore. It's a disease of, of scarring, which is old damage, which is having bad effects, meaning the, the lesions that I had 10 years ago, now I can't walk because of the scarring that, I, that was produced by my lesions 10 years ago. And it's not relevant, the scanning isn't relevant because there's basically no treatment for advanced MS. So you can have lots of brain scans, but if you can't do anything about them, what, what's the point? To replenish her supply of brain scans, Elizabeth contacted Dr. Daniel Peltier, a noted MS researcher at the University of California San Francisco Medical School, who's using new magnetic resonance spectroscopy to measure amino acids in the brain and track disease progression. In exchange for scans Dr. Peltier could add to his database, Elizabeth would get new pictures of her brain. The images of, of, from this new machine are incredible. Um, Dr. Peltier himself ha has been subject to these MRIs of his brain, and they were really gorgeous and scary and fascinating because it shows all sorts of new details that was unavailable until this new machine. And I'm anxious to do it because, in a way, because I'm not expecting anything from the results of this MRI. And it's relieving to not worry that am I gonna get anything that would help me or make me walk better or stop my MS. It won't do that and that's relieving. I've had so many MRIs and because I have a disease of the brain, I didn't want to get depressed about that, but I wanted to delve into it and take ownership of the beauty of the brain. Sometime later, Elizabeth received her scans from UCSF's advanced 7 Tesla MRI machine. The brain appears to be on fire, sparks of fire on different parts of the brain, and they're very unlike traditional MRI images, which are more um, concrete and solid. These are active, alive, and um, uh, I'm really excited to see what I can do with the energy that these images convey. It's important to me personally, and I would like other people who have brain tumors or MS or any other brain disease to feel how ugly it is and how beautiful it is and complex it is and to be challenged by the complexity and beauty.